Welcome to Map Analysis for Hedgehogs. In the last video, we checked Smooth Operator FFM PEG DIL. We analyzed it, marked it up. And this CLL um, reads another DIL, which has a valid sign certificate by Microsoft. So this certificate is not stolen. It has been manipulated to put malicious data inside it without breaking it. How does it work? This is a short explanation video on this topic. Let's talk a little bit about authentic code signature abuse. Now in the smooth operator supply chain attack, we had the trojanized ffmpack.dll. This was patched uh, to execute malicious code. And this code extracts data from D3 decompiler 47 DL. Now the interesting thing about this one, it has a valid sign. So let's check this. You can see here, if you use this internal zigcheck.exe, that it says it's verified signed and by Microsoft. So in general, such files have a higher trust value. They are seen as more trusted than non-signed files, especially from a signer like Microsoft. How does this work? We know there's malicious data in there. So how, how did they do that? Generally, people can either steal certificates or they can manipulate them in a way that they are not broken. This is what happened here. So remember, we found this marker feed phase, feed phase in the file that is what this FFmpeg uses to uh, know where the encrypted malicious data starts, where the shellcode starts. When you search for that, there's one tool that comes up called SIGFLIP. And I have, um, I knew this tool, but because it's not the first time that I've seen malware abusing it. But the interesting part here is that this code in the zigloader.cpp, that is exactly the code in the ffmpeg file. They're pretty much doing the same that we analyzed. So you can, you can use this to check your analysis. And I recommend that you also read the readme here. If you check down below the details section, it explains how it works, how authentic digital signatures work and how the tool abuses them. But there's even one better uh, article, which is here. I did not found it on the original MSDN blog anymore, but it's still in the way back machine. And it, it's an article about authentic code signing and how it can be abused. Legitimate applications also abuse this, especially personalized installers. The mere fact that someone abuses authentic code signatures to put their data inside is not an indicator that it's malicious. They ex the author explains here that Dropbox and um, other applications, they create personalized installers with data in them and they don't want to sign all of them with a new signature. So the way they do this is by what he describes here as cheating authentic code. There is a hash created on the PE file. Let's actually get a bigger picture of that. The certificate data to verify that the file has not been manipulated, they will calculate a hash. And then this hash is embedded in the certificate table and compared to the actual hash, then at the point of checking if this is valid. So if anything changes inside of the um, white areas, then the certificate is not valid anymore. However, certain parts of the file must be excluded because they are part of the certificate. So that means specifically the certificate table and data directories, the, the windows checksum. And of course the certificate structures themselves are not part of this hash. Anything that's put inside here 
will not break the signature. And there is also the way to abuse this um, because some of those structures provide a way to embed your own data. Generally, there are two ways for that known that are described here. The first is um, the wind certificate structure. You can say that the length of the structure is just more than what it currently is. Just manipulate the length and then add your data into that. And secondly, you can use unvalidated attributes uh, or also unauthenticated attributes as it is called in the Authenticode specification. So this is all. If you are interested in the details, I will put the link of this in the description below. Um, but anyways, you don't need to know all of the details. Um, how do you detect this kind of abuse? There is a tool by Didier Stevens. It's called, where's the name? Analyze PE -Zig, And this will show you if such abuse is happening here. So we will execute this tool first on a file that is not where this abuse is, does not happen. And that is the 3CX desktop app because that was validly signed. This is what an application looks like where there's a normal authentic code signature, so to speak. The important fields are this one. This would be the padding that would indicate if there's data after this, um, after this bin certificate structure. So this should always be zero in a valid file. And the same is, where is it? This one, this should also be zero, um, then it's fine. Now let's do the same for the D3D compiler. The D3D compiler we know was manipulated. Here it says it's a valid signature, but you will see here bytes after the signature and signatures, uh, bytes that are not zero. So this is an indicator that this was manipulated. So get this tool um, and um, check yourself. This is quite interesting. By the way, Varus Toto will show such files not as validly signed. There is also a way to disable this in Windows so that Windows will show such files as not validly signed, but this is still an um, opt-in and nothing that is done by default. So this is why this still works as an abuse. The main reason is, well, when legitimate applications do it, it's hard to just turn it off because it will break them. And I found it even quite interesting because I haven't seen that part before, but it seems certain legitimate applications put download URLs inside this data. And then of course the malware authors will just abuse this as a malware downloader by changing the URL. This was an interesting topic to dive into a bit deeper. Um, please make sure to check the links in the description below to read the articles that I showed you briefly and um, download the tools from there. So see you next time.